Throughout human history, the idea of a sword has always fascinated the many. It matters little whether it is the most practical option. It is a weapon that seemingly any society ends up creating at one point or another. A symbol of heroes and villains alike, it is a tool through which one enforces their will through strength. Those that wield them are meant to die by them. A self-assured curse of the responsibility that comes with wielding such destructive potential. But what does it mean to master it when one stops romanticizing violence and strips away the superfluous? All that remains is a tool for the sake of bloodshed. This is a truth realized by the sword prodigy Okita Soji, one who is revered as the most skilled sword wielder in the entirety of the Shinsengumi. A manslayer that inspired fear in those that she faced and those that fought with her, wielding her blade for the sake of those she trusts. The turbulent times that led to the creation of a policing force that required someone like Okita speaks of the brutality required during her era, and naturally, this reflects in her behaviour much the same. A person who pushed aside her kind-hearted nature for the sake of a cold mind that could rationalise murder. Though a woman, she was never perceived as one for that reason. Amongst the ranks of the Shinsengumi, she shows little regard for those she has to fight against, for the battlefield is not a place of good and evil, but a place of persuasive death. To most, she stopped being human and she lost the ability to smile sincerely. A killer that felt nothing while piling up corpses, not shying away from using every method at her disposal and killing her enemies when they were unarmed or incapable of fighting back. Though perhaps for that reason, the rare instances of her displaying human emotion became ever more precious. Defined by her talent and skill, she was a person who despite her ruthlessness on the battlefield, cherished her comrades with great sincerity. Even if she had to witness or even assist in their deaths, she would be there for them until their final moments. But perhaps in a cruel twist of fate, for daring to truly master the sword, she would be punished in the most gruesome fashion. Robbed of a dignified death and robbed of glory, she would not die in any battle, but instead perish because of disease. She would never realise her promises to those that truly mattered to her. And because she dared to die that way, she was cursed by all those who came after her. She became viewed as weak and frail. Even as a heroic spirit, she continues to be haunted by the spectre of disease. No matter how hard she tries to overcome her own mistakes, her own destiny is to remain a weakling and a liar who just had the skills necessary to cut down people. She never asked for much. If the Shinsengumi failed and perished, she wouldn't have regretted it, simply accepted it as a destined outcome. But what she did wish to uphold was a promise she made with her comrades, that she would be together with them until the end and see their ambitions to their end, one way or another. She would not merely be a spectator with no involvement, but help them regardless if they would ever succeed or not. Sincerity, Makoto, is the one word that defines Okita. That is the one truth she believes in the most. For that reason, she chastises herself as being unworthy of the title of not just being the Shinsengumi's first captain. She considers herself to be a failure of a member altogether. The only way for this to change, the only wish she has for that reason. Please, let her fight until the end. She does not wish to avert the Shinsengumi's destruction, nor does she have a grand vision of paradise. She will accept her death at the hands of an enemy, simply if it means that she can fight to the death with her comrades, wielding her blade with the same ruthlessness as always, but filled with pride, knowing she fulfilled her promise. Even so, her blade, though it can momentarily surpass that which is considered possible, still could never reach that dream. In the end, mere swordplay is not enough to reach the future. No matter who tries to assure her, even if it was a member of the Shinsengumi itself, she will put herself down for a failure outside her own control. For that is the shape of her sincerity, something she will not compromise on. Naturally, if she were given the opportunity to fight for her wish, she would aim to pursue it with all her strength. However, if by chance, she happens to put her trust into her master, she may end up creating a new promise 
treasuring it no less than what she had in life, it would end up being something that manages to outshine the regret of her inability to keep her vow to her comrades, and while perhaps not removing it, it would lift an ever so small burden from her shoulders. Though Okita herself is largely unaware of her own emotions and how she displays them, the striking difference between her days in the Shinsengumi and her presence in Chaldea have left all her comrades agape. Their own words could never reach her, but at last, someone else had managed to do it. A new reason to fight. Something worth shedding blood for. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this Okita analysis. Once again, a huge thank you to Sparrow for script writing and Dio for providing me this lovely artwork. I can't do this without them. Now, until the next manifestation, when despair and hope gather once more.